Hello everyone, welcome to your 25th Grasshopper tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take um, part 2 of the vectors, or like basics of vectors. Um, this tutorial, we're going to learn about the rotate and the, um, the amplitude um, for vectors in Grasshopper. Anyway, so before I actually mention anything, I wanted to say something uh, or like address something I said two tutorials ago about the metabol. Um, command in Grasshopper. Now I said there is a project similar to it in Guangzhou, China for Zaha Hadid. Um, the thing is, I was wrong uh, in Guangzhou. Hopefully I'm not reading Guangzhou really badly right now. Anyway, it's it's this. If you do like a research, you're gonna find this building. Um, this is a performing arts center and um, what I meant actually was this one, the Galaxy Soho and it's actually in Beijing and not in Guangzhou. So when you're doing the metabol function, you can create something very, very similar to this project by Zaha Hadid. I would highly recommend um, like playing with it and seeing if you can come up with something really similar to this project. Now I found um, a channel in YouTube called the OM Dot. Now he or she are creating lots of videos for Grasshopper and the thing is they just like Put music on the background and you have to follow along the uh, the steps they're doing and uh, they don't say anything but you can actually like create lots of things if you just you know follow along with the designs they do so one of their videos is called the, um, the metabol and if you do something similar you can actually um, have a design that is almost um, almost the same idea as the one for the Zahadid um, Galaxy Soho. Now, I don't know why I mentioned Guangzhou. I think because um, it was one of my case studies for my graduation project. And um, I think I just, I don't know, I got mixed up. Anyway, so this is not the one I'm talking about. I don't think you can do this with the Metaball. Um, I mean, if you can, you're probably really a genius or something, but I mean, this is not the one I meant. The one I meant was actually the galaxy so. So yeah, this is just what I wanted to say before I actually started with this tutorial. And uh, yeah, so let's start. The one we're gonna create today is something similar to this. Now, okay. <laughs> now the thing is, I'm gonna create um, like interpolated curves and I want these points to affect the, the um, the curves that are surrounding it um, yeah, but using the vectors. Now the thing is, we're going to learn the rotate first and then we're going to do something similar to this um, example. So let's delete this. Okay, so for today, I'm going to create uh, a grid of lines or sorry, a grid of points uh, in two ways. So the first way I'm going to do is Let's draw first um, a rectangle in, gra in Rhino and then type in curve, set one curve, and then get the populate 2D. And by default, the region of the populate 2D is this. I'm going to just set my curve so it will be inside the curve I want. Now, the number by default is 100. Uh, if you remember, last time we did the populate 3D. And populate 3D, like it says, I mean, it's for geometries, which are like in 3D. And populate 2D if you have like a surface or just on two axis um, geometries. So the next thing I'm going to do is type in vector to point. Uh, before I say anything, if you want to see all the vector commands, it's here. So this is the rotate that we're going to uh, talk about now. And the other one is the amplitude, it's this one. So vector to point, what I'm going to do with this tutorial is actually, I mean for this example, I'm not going to make a new point, I'm going to take the, the same points from the populate 2D. So what I'm going to do is just type in move and then connect it. And by default, let's see, we have um, a copy of the cloud of points which I created in the populate 2D and the Z axis. Now before everything, I want it to be in the X axis. Okay, and if you want it like a bit further, all you have to do is just come up with a slider, so maybe 10. And I think more than 10 is better. 
So let's do it old school. Let's go edit. Type in 50. Okay. Okay. So now I can see we can like make it a bit further than the original counts. Okay, so the tip will be the, the copy and the base will be the original ones. Now, like I said before, when it comes to vectors, you cannot see anything. You actually have to have the vector display. So just display it here and then connect the points to the anchors. So here's what we have. Okay. If you want to rotate it, just double click and type in rotate. Now we're going to have a bunch of rotate options. What you want to do is check this one. This is for the rotate the vector. And you just connect your vector to the, um, the vector to point uh, output. And then connect it like this. And you can see that nothing happens because it really needs two things. First of all, it needs the, um, the axis. And the second thing it needs is the angle. Now the axis is the, the x here. I would recommend choosing any axis except the one you choose for the move. So here it's either Y or Z. I'm going to choose Y. And for the angle, uh, make sure it first in degrees so you can have it easier from 0 to 360. And the thing is, we're going to type in 0. This is the lowest number. And I want it to be at a 210. And the highest will be 360. So connect it. And now you can see that I can control the angle of the vectors I created. Okay, so this is pretty much it for the rotate. Okay, uh, rotate is pretty easy. The other one we're gonna do is the um, amplitude. Now, the amplitude. I'm gonna create a grid of cur a grid of a grid of points, which are more um, not random. So, okay. So first thing I'm going to do is do construct point, and I'm going to get the series so I can have a bunch of numbers, and then I'm going to say I want 50 points maybe, and the distance between the points to be 10. I'm going to connect the numbers to both the x and the y. Now by default we're going to have something like this, I think 50 is too much, okay this is enough. Now, if I want to make this a grid of points, all you have to do is just graft one of these. So it's either the X or Y, it doesn't matter. Right click, type in graft. And you can see now we have a nice grid of uniform points. So nothing random here. The next thing you want to do is get a point. Right click, set multiple points. I'll go to my top view. And then just place points wherever I want. Doesn't matter. Um, let's just fix this a bit. I really like things placed you know, nicely. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. This is this is okay. Stop. <laughs> Stop. This is okay. Um. Okay. So the thing is, if you just want to make a bunch of lines from these points. All you have to do is just type in interpolate curve and just connect it. You can see that we have lines connecting. It. Now the thing is if you hmm, okay if you graph the y you can see that your curve is gonna go along the x-axis. If you graph the x is gonna go through I mean along the y-axis. So I know I said it doesn't matter, but for this one I want to graph the y and not the x. So yeah, let's let's graph the y. Um, what I want is actually these curves to be affected by the points which I created. Like if it's closer to it, I want it to, to go away from it. You know, like when you have a magnet and there's a field, like this invisible field around it, this is what I want the points to be, like the magnet that pushes away um, a magnetic field of something, I don't know, you know, like the positive and the negative, but they're both negatives, then it will like push it away. This is exactly what I want to do with the points and the lines. So before everything, I'm going to do closest point. 
Now there's two two options it's either closest point or closest point. Choose closest point and not closest point because it's gonna give you something really different. So we'll just connect these two here. And after we're done, we're gonna put um, a vector to point. And then now when it comes to the vector to point, make sure to flip this. So why we need to flip it, I'll show you now. If you just type in vector display, Now, if I didn't flip it, it's going to be like this. So what it says, it says all the points that are closer to the to these points which I placed, the tip is going to be the point itself, which I placed, and the base is going to be the other points. I really wanted the opposite. I want it to come out of the point. So what I'm going to do, I want the tip to be the other points and the base and the point which I created to be the base. So what you're going to do is just flip it like this. So this is the correct way to, yeah, to put the vector to point option. Now, what we're going to do is do a copy of the points which we have here. Okay, so double click, type in move, and then just connect your point to the geometry. And we're just going to delete this for a while. Okay. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is get something called the amplitude. Now the amplitude is, it's like the strength of the vector. You can control how strong it is and the radius of it. So just connect the vector to the vector amplitude. And the direction of the move is going to be the amplitude. So now you can see that something is happening. If you just hide this, whoops. Right. Okay, now I'm just going to make an amplitude for it. Let's say 50. Now you can see that when I move it, it's 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 like controlling how strong and how how far the radius of the effect of these points are. Now, this is okay. Uh, if you just come up and create an interpolate curve, You can see now that we have these um, lines which I can control the same way I did when I first showed the example. Now, if I want something a little bit more accurate, um, what you can do is a little bit of math between the distance from the closest point to the amplitude itself. So what I want you to do now is to follow very, very thoroughly exactly what I do. So the first thing you want to do is get a division and then get a subtraction and then a maximum. Now I'm not going to explain why I chose these. You just have to follow along and I'm pretty sure you're going to use it the same way in all the other examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the maximum, uh, the B of the maximum set the data item to zero that makes makes it sure that it's always positive i don't want anything in the negative now the result connected to the a and then just come up with a number i would suggest something like 2.00 and this number connected to the a okay and not the b the result here to the b and then the distance to the a and get another number to the B. Okay, so now let's check if it's correct. Okay. So now you can see that I can make it more accurate, like how how far I want it, how strong the radius of it, the strength. Now let's get the interpolate curve so I can see it better. Connect it. Let's hide the move. And now you can see that if I move this, it's, it's a bit more, um, let me see. It's neater than if I just, if I just like put a, a number in it, you know? Like if I just put one slider and then start to move it, it won't be perfect. Now, let me see. Mm, let me just 
double check. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, if you move these points, you can see that it affects uh, the lines which you create in your grid. So yeah, this was a pretty easy tutorial, I think. Everything is fine, no problem. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. And actually, the next tutorial will be the third part of the vectors. Um, I don't know which one I'm going to choose. Maybe I'm going to talk about fields or maybe radial fields. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to make like a, I'm going to try to make a four part uh, series for the vectors because I don't think many people mention how important it is it to like understand how to work with vectors and grasshopper. So yeah, I think this pretty much sums it up for today. Um, if you have any questions, please send me an email and not comment. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe though. I mean, that'd be nice. But the thing is with the comments, I do tend to not see them as fast as I, if I just like, if you send me an email and, um, so yeah, if you have like a very urgent question, please email me. And if I have the time, I'll try to make a video about the answer. And, uh, but if it's like something really easy and you can wait for the answer, just like put it in the comments and it'll be fine. So yeah, this should be pretty much it for today. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.